how wide the doorway was. Wasa wu wu wasa wasa wu wat we kawul that yaksa aka awe tlesya tu wat lak kunakhewe da di jakhu jitunayen ko ha ishan yohan jade khatna u joya kashya khushkeya yidat heswa saka kwati kwas Hit ya de gartu art on a park in de gartu art with Zeit Kun Zeit Sakshoe Kakuzi to you, was Kay Kaka Kajin, a Hasaka. Konahoe has seen Kaw, Wuchin Yautu would lock. Yashkash Nik ten after was a good wash shuko, a ya kashi darky. Sukaki ark, a wash a kak wash ye. Sleged <laughs> 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 then a cheese, dech wood, when yard they dach dakati, we jaji. 
Okay. Ah. Uh, hey. Ah. Uh. small, large, which one? A kin. A kin. A kin. But when we go over these measurements, you're going to see, like, sometimes it goes, there. like, he's, as he's sort of putting them out in his mind, he's focusing on singular and plural. They change for singular and plural. Sometimes they change for living and non-living things. Uh, and then sometimes they're going to have ones that say, like, th there's definite patterns, but it seems to be this, we're going to find, like, a set of three or four different patterns to say, like, big, bigger, biggest, too big, small, smaller, smallest, too small. And for some of them, like you could say something as big, like yagi, and then you could say, uh, for he was saying the bigger one, you'd say kach yagi, ah. Uh. So that's how you'd say the the bigger one. Then you'd say the, or I think you'd say a yanach yagi, ah, and then kach yagi, ah, uh, for maybe the biggest one. Um, anyways, I'll I'll show I'll share those with you folks. But then some of them, like when you say too big, a lot of them you'd say kudach. And then whatever the thing is, it's too big, it's too heavy. Uh, but for some of them to say like, it's too small, there's a whole different verb for that. Then it switches to which is it's too small. Um, and you'll see like short, long and short sometimes does that as well. And then there was something that I got from one of the Raven stories, which was, so yanach is more than, but sometimes you'll say kach aya nachuk e, and it was like basically saying there's nothing better, right? Kach aya nachuk e, which literally means very. It's more than, you know, good. So kach aya nach is a way you can really sort of pump something up to a high level. Uh, but then you could say kaya nach, so you put ka in front of it. And it means to be more than an individual. So you could say, Ach kaya nach you're stronger than I am. Or, you know, something. So you're usually doing a direct comparison, and that's what the ka is doing. So then you could say, Ach jiya ka nach So you got j or j ka, Ach jikaya nach, j ka ya nach. And that's. And then when you have heavy, it instantly gets all put together for too heavy for me to lift or carry. But you don't have to have the lifting or carrying in there. It's just saying it's too heavy for my hands. And then I thought we'd look at, um, it made me think of this. We'll look at a couple of examples of Raven and the whale. Because when he was in the whale and they were cutting him out, um, there's some things in here that it made me think of as a sort of trying to figure that stuff out as a sort of messing around telling this fun story where I made people late and they did a lot of work for me. So I'm going to have to figure out. I also said I'm going to Los Angeles. I have to buy something nice for them this weekend, like some kind of thing that they've got there. Huh? So we see like, so here Raven is in this whale and this is a uh, cochain. Frank Italio, and he starts yelling. Uh, whenever there's a Raven, when he starts talking in these stories, sometimes there's very specific things that Raven says. And in this case, he says, Adusa ka ka nach an ka ka shi, which is so Adusa, who ka 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 nach over a person. This is where it gets weird. Uh, let them cut it. So it is a hortative. Um, and so sometimes like we put it together and we say, who could 
let it be cut through above a person, which is kind of clunky, right? So, but it's sort of like, how do you translate some of these wild things that he says? And in this case, like, who could who could be allowed to cut above a person? I don't I don't really know. But he uses hortative verbs a lot, and then he'll use some stuff that's just really um, really wild. And then they do get into a discussion where. Uh, Another speaker is there and she says, uh, sometimes they'll say on yeti. And so there are sometimes various versions where what exactly Raven says just varies a little bit. But I want to get down to this part where they say uh, people, as people begin cutting it open and working to separate the sides, so this is like cutting vertically and probably horizontally as well, or maybe both built in there. Wush de kun. So um, we'll go look up de kun just so that we know what that thing is. Because there's there's a, a few of these other things that are really good, I think, to know. So let's jump over to here and see if we have the kun uh, facing away from. So the kun is the opposite of the yin. So the yin is to face towards something, right? And so they, these are some things I think that are good to know as well. So stand facing me if you're a teacher. Ach uh, the would be facing me. Ach the kun would be facing away from me. Uh, and there are some like uh, dekadin is very similar, facing the opposite direction. Uh, those are very similar. This is the one, uh, if you're ever around kid, or maybe you'll do it yourself. I asked uh, Shikshani, how do you say your shoes are on backwards? And she said, whoosh dekadin, and then she laughed. So it means your shoes are facing away from each other. So that means when you look at the sort of the arch part that's supposed to be sort of in the Tlingitundatani, that's kind of the face of it, I guess. Um, okay. So we get that here, whoosh de kun yun dusni. So people are are having it face, you know, they're cutting it and having it sort of facing each other, which or facing away from each other, which was talking about pulling it apart, which is really wild to see like the logic behind this and they say the opening was the opening always too small uh, so this is the part for it to be thick so this is for something solid to be thick although it's got it's doing some complicated stuff here. And then this would be talking about probably being too small of an opening. And then this would be kunas ka. And it goes ka changes to a when you put the ch on there. So if I was going to say the opening is too small for the fridge, I might say. So, and this is where you don't need to say maybe greater than less than yanach and or yanach and akin. You might just end up saying kunask kun. Wait, it should be kusak ah. That's what I would expect it to be kusak ah. This is saying this is also a habitual form, right? So, the raven the raven books are good examples to find stuff, but it's always super high level language, and we can also look at. Cascade probably has a similar thing in this I have a question about that verse. What's that? Sorry for interrupting. But I have a question about that verb you showed us, kunask h and kunaskach, kunaskach. Because um like kuge is big, but you see ye kuge. So it'd be like this big. Do yeah. these verbs have those kind of pre-verbs like ye? I see yach. Yeah, so this one, ade yach kunis kakch, yeah. The place where it has become really thick, like that, I think that yach is probably like 
uh, a very, that's very similar to yun. It means to completion. And it could pop up right in front of a verb. And you'll tell me it should be low tone when you've got it. But a lot of these things that are talking about measurement, thick, long, far, short, all of these different things, there's there's a it's gonna be some different ways that you see this. And let's let's go to the verb dictionary and, and look up like um we'll look up far and see what we see what we see for far. So if we go to far, uh so here we've get na she. So here, there's, there's a, some kind of funky things that happen with some of these, and I don't understand them. For some of them, in the imperfective, the conjugation prefix is there, right? Then that's, that's when they say, like, قطلان, oh, wait, 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 the snow is deep. It's ق, and it's also popping up in the imperfective, which is kind of usually not supposed to, but that's why you would say na she. It's far. Okay, and just to clarify, when you say conjugation prefix, you're talking about the na, ga, ga, or zero? Yes, so okay. this is a na verb, and it's there in the imperfective, which you really, as far as I know, measurements are the only place where that tends to happen, for something to be deep, far, short. Um, but it's also not every time. They, they have... This is something I think once we get done with this uh, shot ridge, we're looking at these little cards where he's talking about measurement and stuff, and it's really amazing. Uh, and then to see how accurately he was writing Klingit as well. Like I, I think I was overlooking those cards for a long time, so I'm glad Kuh has brought them up for us to sort of examine. And, uh, and we can show you what we've got so far. I'll, I'll show you in a second. Uh, so. Uh, you can have klesh unashe. That's where you get the word klesh unashe, which has a bunch of variations on how to say it. It means not far, but it could also say almost or before long. So you could say klesh unashe gachtucha. It won't be long until we eat, which is really wild, right? Like just in terms of how these things work. They have a kind of a core meaning, but then they do a whole bunch of other stuff. But if we look down here and we see kunashleyi, right? Wa kunashleyi yet sa. So when you get the ku in front of it, for all for a bunch of these distance and measurement things, ye kuge, ye you know, when you start seeing those, it's comparing it to something else, sort of. So instead of saying it's big, you're saying it's this big. So if you're going to say it's 10 fathoms deep or something, you would switch the, the ka would just jump on there. And this is not though, there's three possible ka prefixes in a verb. One of the two of them sit on the same wheel where you can have horizontal surface or sphere. It's one or the other. But then there's another one inside of that one closer to the root that has the third ka, which is compared to. So whenever you see a verb that has ka, ka uh, that means one of them is that comparison one. And it's usually going to have the irrealis with it, even if it's in a positive form. Because you're sort of saying, like, it's this big. Uh, and so it's it's the logic is a little bit fuzzy for me. I just sit around. I'm like, I don't know. But just in terms of, like, that's usually what you're saying. That's why you see yeksu genk, yeku ge. Stuff like that is you're getting that comparative prefix on there. Other thoughts or questions? Check out Susie James too and see. We'll just compare what happened. One of the really fun parts of this book, and I'm really excited for when it does come out in its final form is that you can go back and forth and you can sort of say, okay, remember that part in the whale story where the people are opening it up and he's trying to decide if it's wide enough? We'll probably find another version of that exact same thing happening. So if we go down to Susie James and Raven and the whale, we scroll down. So he's 
He's in the whale, he eats its heart, it dies. He says, Aduski ka kanachan kachashik u. So he's, he says almost the same thing, right? And this is the other wild part. It's like the, these speakers, one was in Huna, one was in Yakutat, uh, one was recorded in the 50s, one was recorded probably in the 1960s or 70s. Uh, so let's go down. Let's see. Hold on. Here it is. So they cut a hole. Pukyach away would do wakash. They cut a box shaped hole. And then she's getting more into like when they're getting tired and how they take turns. When he was satisfied with the size of the hole. Dutuqa. So this tuqa you can use in certain ways to say like they felt like it was sufficient. They were they felt pleased. And so you could use a similar structure to this, like when they felt like they had gotten enough berries, they went home. And you would end up with something probably tuqa, has to tuqa. Um, but it's really interesting. So here Okay, doing kind of a Okay. Try that. Okay, so chayaku is suddenly. Dutuka. Uh, and then we get. So she says kalage. But she she does this thing where a lot of her ends come out as voiced L's. Like my great grandfather used to talk like this as well. So, like, instead of saying uhan, there's a recording of him, him and he'll say, Ooh, haul away. Ooh, haul away. And same with Kaskei. Like, if you listen to her, if you want to see what these sound like, you know, the recordings are on clinkitlanguage.com. This book is on our our uh, advanced Klingit page. And so, but here we have Kanashke. So it is a certain size. So we do have like a comparison, we are getting the conjugation prefix jumping up. So it's when we get into dimensions and measurements, there's a whole bunch of complicated stuff that goes on between uh, whether we're going to get ka and u on there, whether the the conjugation prefix is going to activate for some mysterious reason, and then whether we're going to have sort of which verb we're going to be using. And this one is just for something to be big. Um, yeah. And in this one, there's a song. And there's my name. Nay. <laughs> and then I know there's. I don't think Shah Dog tells it. I do know that uh, Frank Dick tells it. So we'll see. Oh, that one doesn't work. Sorry. Let me try going here. How many pages is this book? Uh, 746 by the time I gave it to. Wow. SHI folks. Okay, I'll scroll down. Hold on. So this one, I think I got to redo it because my bookmarks are broken. Sorry. So gish dach wugudi. I got to go up a couple stories. Hold on. Each kahin up one more. No, that's Raven and Fire. Mmm. No, I'm really going the wrong way. Maybe. Okay. I'll go. I have, I have a question. Oh. Why isn't it said like this? Um. Gich Dach Yes Wagudi. Oh. So uh whoops, let me go find. So uh Dach is around. So the well the, the answer is Wugudi would be the raven that was walking. 
So what this I does is it turns this verb into an adjective. It's like it's called the attributive suffix because it turns it into an attribute. So just like you say yak a yak a yi ka, that's a good person. And you could take a whole bunch of verbs. You could take verbs and put this attributive on there. Kitsini shawat wugu di ka wugu di cake. Uh, and so that's that's why. So it's gish dach wugu di yeh. Bull kelp um, around walking. So it's the raven that walked around. So it turns it into like walking raven, I guess. Is wugu di yeh would be rock, walking raven. So if I was going to say raven walked along the bull kelp, I would say. Gish, dach, yes, wugut. Well, you could, I would put the yes, probably, I probably would say gish, dach, wugut, and keep those, because that's all, you, the raven as a noun is going to kind of interrupt the motion. So whatever your motion is, so gish, dach, wugut, walking, and so both help among, so that, or around, so Whenever you start with the sort of the noun that it's going to or from, and then you have the post position, uh, you're going to have the motion verb right after that. So it's you wouldn't really like so if you're going to say uh, I'm going over there with my friend, you'd say adekakwagut achunitin. Or you could say achunitin ade kakwagut. But you wouldn't really want to say ade achunitin kakwagut because it interrupts the motion and it gets kind of a little bit confusing to hear. Because um, you, you want to keep that, whatever the motion is, you want to, or the direction, you want to keep it right next to the motion. <laughs> Go close the door. So, okay. Um, how would you say? Raven went or Raven walked along the bull kelp. I would say Gish Dach Wugut Yeh. But you got to make a decision. What's the most important thing? That he went um, around the bull kelp? Or, and we should translate this as went down the bull kelp or down around the bull kelp. Uh, but if you're trying, if someone says, Adusa gishtach wuguti. Yeh gishtach wuguti. Gudesa wugut yeh. Gishtach wuguti wugut yeh. So, kind of, whatever you say first is the most important thing. So, but I've always known this story and the shirt and other things like as gish dach wugut di yeh. So then in my mind, I would just say gish dach wugut yeh. But I would say you kind of have these two uh, octopus tentacles. Yeh is one, gish dach wugut is the other. And you can flip them over each other. Like word order on Schlinget is flexible, but you just usually put the most important stuff first. So you would not say yes, wugudi gishdach. Yeah, like that. That would start to get a little bit difficult to understand because it almost makes it sound like the it's a metaphor, and that you know the the gish the gish were walking somehow. Hmm. So you you would want you wouldn't want to separate gishdach wugud, and then yes, like you can have, and, and there's other examples too. Where some things for a motion verb, you generally don't want to separate the directional stuff from the motion verb. It's got to go directional because that impacts what type of verb it's going to be as far as the conjugation prefix. So it tends to be right there. Uh, I know there's one more that we can look at. I'll fix some bookmarks in this thing. But if we go to uh, oh yeah, 
Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Out of Ach, Ach, Yeti. So he's still in there. He kills the whale. Aduski Kakanach Akakash. Same, so it's a hortative without the suffix on the end. But it's still saying the same thing. And then it was chopped open. So here she has Kakaudutlitsu. So that's the verb to chop something. Uh, and then you have Kakaudutli. So for me, that once you have that Kaka, it's like it's a surface and you're comparing it to another surface. So that's where you're getting the apart from each other kind of play do et yach ach kukunash gay uh oh a is uh, uh who uh, who might so there's this se, uh that is a particle and so it's sort of like Let's see, I know I have that one. Like, because I know when I was, uh, I, th I think it was in Sitka when I noticed this, when people would ask how I was doing, a lot of times they'd say, Wa sus iyati. And I would hear that sus. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I, I don't know why it's going sus. And then uh, asking about that, it's a contraction of se, which let me find. So it's like perhaps or maybe, and so you sort of see it, it just sort of, and, and there's this way in storytelling where they'll say like, Asiwege, and they'll, they'll put a whole bunch of these little particles together, which is turning things into a bit of a super maybe type of thing. So, do it yach. Which is really wild. So that means about the same si about the same as him. Same size is what you'd end up with. Ach um, So then you got that. Okay. Big enough for Raven. Okay. Other thoughts, questions, things you've been thinking about or are thinking about? I've, I've got a question of something that I've been thinking about. So when uh, back in 1916, when Franz Boas did that dictionary and he made like all the verbs were just mostly roots, like kind of like what I guess, you know, what, what, what we use kind of. But uh, I, I was kind of curious. Um, what is... Um, I, I don't think I like that other verb book that I used to have, the big yellow one. Mm -hmm. um, is it just me or does it seem like that one's a very tough one to navigate through? It's it's really good, but it doesn't show you the theme. Like, so I, I feel like at the time they made it in the 60s and it came out in the early 1970s. Is there wasn't a full grasp of like all the, you know, they worked with so many wonderful speakers and so many incredible folks, but they just didn't know at the time, like all the information you would need to be able to really use a verb. So mm -hmm. you can look stuff up, but sometimes like there's an awful lot of commands and perfectives and a few futures. Uh, but I think there's really good sample sentences in there and they did a really good job of capturing the verbs and so usually if i'm just see okay if i if i'm looking at that one i'm primarily looking for meaning and not trying to find how to conjugate a verb so it is really useful once you learn how to sort of use verbs but then it, it also it doesn't tell you the conjugation prefix it doesn't um i think actually that's the only thing it really doesn't tell you mm. Uh, because it tells you uh, whether there's an object or a subject or both. Um, and do we know how it does that? 
Where does it tell you that information? Do we know that? Like if we looked up, so here's fancy. But how do I know? Uh, is there an object there? Is there a subject there? Is there neither? Is there both? I just I use I just use it when it try, I'm trying to get it get started, you know, like I'm like, okay, I quickly want to look this, like fast. And then it gets me started, then I can go someplace else where I can get more detail. Right. Yeah. Like and you could find a verb here. Like if you if you yeah. are translating or something, you can jump in here and get the meaning of that. Mm -hmm. But like so like let's just look up this. So we'll go look up satk and see. Like, okay, well, fast, well, I want to be able to use that, right? So we can look here, we say, uh, that tells you something. Anybody know what that tells you? They're fast. It does say they're fast. The K. It tells us the conjugation type. Uh -huh. And it's G. Mm -hmm. Every future that's G will have K right in front of it. Everyone that's ka will have ye, low tone, right in front of it. That's why you say tu ye ik kosatin. Uh, and then I get an imperfective, but it doesn't tell me, like, should I be saying khat yasatk or should I be saying kha yasatk? So the answer to that is going to be in the Shingit section. So we're going to look up satk and we're going to go try and find it. So we go to S, go down. And we get satk. And it does tell us, because it says S T. But what does that tell us? S T. The state subject group? transitive? Yes. It, well, for here they say stative. Oh. But what that means is it is object intransitive. There is only an object. Put a capital O right in front of that thing. Chat yasatk. Yi yasatk. Has yasatk. That's how it's going to work. People are fast. And if we see TR, what is that telling us? Then it's a transitive and it has the object and a subject. That means you're going to put an O right here and an S right after it. For this one, you're going to put an O here in front of the K and you're going to put an S after the K. Right? So those that thing goes in the middle. Right, so that it doesn't tell us that directly though. So this was how they were writing it back then. So now we just we just write an O and an S. We say there it is. It's right there. When it says I N, what is that one? Intransitive? Yes, it is intransitive. And what this is telling us, no object, only subject. Right, so that's what it tells. So if we were to write this, don't write an O, but put an S right there, capital S. There is one more. Let me see if I can find it. And then for some of them, they didn't know, right? Uh, oh, I know. I will go look for. I am. For them, that's impersonal. Oh. And that means there's no object, no subject, neither. That's Those are usually going to be weather verbs or stuff like that. Okay, so it does give you a bunch of information. So the things that are missing is the conjugation type and then the stem variation. They do not tell you that information. And so as we sort of look and start to sort of say, well, let's import all of this data into a new thing, then we need to go through and find them. Because some of them, you can piece it together. So if you go through some of these, like once you see cow to chuck, like that's a zero. I know that's a zero. Um, at least it should be a zero. That's a pretty, pretty good prediction. You know, it is a zero. But, um, but then if you're working with a speaker, and you find one of these and you say, well, I'm not sure which one it is. Try and get them to give you the command form of it because that should reveal it. 
And then there's more to get the stem variation, but that's not right now. Okay. Good cheese shoe, huh? Thank you. Mm -hmm. It does have so many great phrases and examples in it. That's really nice. Yes, like they will throw you alive into the furnace. <laughs> uh, touch. And, and yeah. cute pictures too. <laughs> Such cute pictures. Yitsini an kanastate yikartiqich. Don't know what the deal is with that one, but there it is. And this is plural too. When you all are living, they will throw you all into it's into the fire. I don't know. I, I would think it's a, a translation of scripture. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That would make sense. There's quite a few in here that mm -hmm. are direct translations. Mm. Okay. I have a question. Uh. Um, when you're talking about whoosh the cutting, my daughter always wears her shoes backwards so that, so do I say that shuck does too do teesk whoosh the cutting or Woosh the cutting, shuck the two do teeth, or woosh the cutting, shuck the shuck the two teeth. Well, again, I kind of well, it depends on the intention of what you're saying. I, I feel like the natural way would be their name their shoes backwards. Like, it seems like that would be a pretty good way. Um, and then it, there might, if you want to say always wears them, then you're going to have to say, you're, you're probably going to use the khusr, the verb to like put, let's to pull your shoes on. So then you would probably say she always pulls them on backwards. Um, and then, but wearing them too is, is another thing, or, or like they are always backwards. You could always say that to Yena teach. So right now, she always puts them on backwards. Mm -hmm. What's the verb? It's going to be yek. And so let's go, uh, let's go check it out. So it's going to get us into, what is that? Okay, into here. And we'll go down to the wands. How do you wear shoes backwards? Sideways. They face on the right, right on the left. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking the toe went at the heel. How do you do oh, that? Wow. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Put on, pull off. <laughs> I, I'm teaching her how. Um, how to speak clink it, and this would be a phrase that she could learn. Mm -hmm. So I would probably say khus But you can also say khus It depends if it's like on a regular basis or if you're saying every single time. So then you I would probably say their name. Yeah, and then do teach. I would I would probably just say do teachy, because I, I don't think you'd have to pluralize it in this case. Right. Do teachy. Who's at the yik? We put them on backwards. Is that how you say it? you put them on backwards? Wrong foot, wrong foot, foot. Did you say it was at the kin? So it would be Shakta to do teachly who's a diak whoosh the cutting. I would probably say do teach whoosh the cutting 
But I, I think that one might be fine too, going on either side. Chapter two, the Tisli Wushta Kadin, who's at a yik. Yeah, that yeah, sounds good. Gonna cheese. Ah, it's a check, Rosa. Ah, gonna cheese. Um, Shanna Kate. So, Yana as yik sak tlaik aya skak kwasnik yakhana kunas chish um kega gech ye awa sak talan sitlan cha ye yiko sat kadjikit lepas bay ye dat li ye yegaskuk Ye a kawasak talan setlang. Ye agasak talan setlang. So ye ke chin kat katlake seek kak geek as ye a kawasak. Kad kil kakada kil yuyakatange ke akwa akt. I put the Google link in the chat. I wanted to share this story of a project down in Haida country. introduction. <laughs> Okay, Johan. Goodness, jeez. Yeah, oh, well, Johan, so hot to us, so cool. Hashish go has ani kasau ku. Hak inach aya hot to us, so cool. Would do a saw. Yeah, well. Wasa ush, ye got to sanecho, ye got to darken. Yet, like. Yan Yan Nachtu Dark Yawa Achtu Wati Ya Washiak Ya Anikach Katlach Jinni Katlach Shah Tlach Yada at Kasle Zanti Zanti Kayini Seed Ka Atlein akhut za ti ya an kak. Akhu akhu a has to to us a go. We just has to ye janeit a te do sai a kaye wuti. Echos a ku. A do sa ye has wuti in. Gastano ka menden ha. Kushi akhu a wasa. Wasa ye gay, was such a gay away where ka, which we shall what? Ya on Dachaway has saw a cut the tea, we cut key, a cut Dachaway cut the tea has saw a coo. Tesha to a school, sing it, we ka saw ye, cut key ka ye got to see me. Ye away, a gay hat with tea in Hawaii. Was a teen, a train. Who has it to us a good gain with the school? A day away, you do saw ye, ya has the army. Ye away after a week a dart. Kill away a corner. A train a hilo. A car away has the yuk a tongue a connach yak a. Mount a care, come on a lower. Has a teen so. Mount a lunny. Aye, would he? Where hit with two he's. Ya a hoa tattoo, Larry Kamura, who awoke the quos. Das away, Mount Alani Koa. Hokoa, just ye sigh away has a yeh with tourists has to jeez. 
wishat khanakh yayat aya asai khatakh lidzi wa hawli hatte haswa ati aqa hasaka wa aq asai awe hastu khinakh yu hasqe wa tanadat anjwi mauna lani khutzati aidat kulchi shu ha wuke yu khatangi khanakh wuke Wasa wuti yi ye jinei kastin shkashnik dat Clarence Jackson YouTube sock Kulchish kadena dat yi ji wu nein To a guess a good dat yi ji kachtu ne wu jin yi yi deka kwenik da sakwa da sakwa Ah, Google Doc link a dot. Ah. Elon Kach answers Kutsati. Tashach to us, please. Okay. Wish Kachnik Kakao to a Nik way. Intermediate thing it. And I read the wrong document. I was just going so far in the story. I was like, boy, we went far. I was just giving him all the answers because I had the wrong one open. <laughs> oh my God. But then I shut it down. But then I shut it down. And I switched over, and I was like, "Okay, what's this?" And they're like, "You're still sharing the screen with all the answers." <laughs> so it's been uh, it's been quite a week. So. Well, well, I think I have to go to sa. Ah, yeah, okay. Enough. There's the Google Doc, but actually, Kook did an Elon version too at the same time. Okay. What was the other version we were looking at with the green lines? What was that? What what program was he using? I think that one was Elon. Yeah, Elon. The other one with the, the green waves. Oh, no. audition. Audition. Ah, uh, ah, uh, gonna change. Yeah, I think it's like an Adobe software audition room. Oh, yeah, to edit the audio and stuff. Yeah, and it was I, when I was listening to it too. It's not. It's a it's a great recording, but it's also a little muffled, like in terms of the audio quality. So, okay, let's take a look, and then we'll listen to some stuff, and we'll chat about it, see what we think. <laughs> And if we have time, you're going to share us share with us the um, measurement tools. Oh, that's right. Okay. Sheesh. Okay. So we've got chalk IU, and then let's see. And let's see, whoosh to chide at da dune nu jin. We heard two different things amongst our group, and so we wrote them both. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I would probably say whoosh chide at da dune nu jin. I do think that is, ends up being low. And this is interesting, whoosh chide. Uh, I would probably say they used to work for each other. People used to always work for each other because mm. Wu Chin would be working together on something. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> the whole family. Xia <laughs> wouldn't Yeah. The ya is usually high tone in that, and it kind of means. Um, Intellect, I think. And then Aya 
du ti. Yeah, so and when he says du ti, yeah, I think people carry it or it was brought somewhere or it was given. And I think in the context he was talking about like respect, right? And, and so there's probably different ways to uh, interpret this just in, in terms of like do t, but it, it it does seem to be the carrying verb. So people carry it, people have it, people give it. And, and there's some areas where like you might have some just interpretation decisions. And that's for things things that are non-physical objects. It's either a compact object or an abstract thing. So this yes. works for time, respect, like uh, all kinds of things. Yeah. That's good. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, from Chilkat. And that gets us to. I don't know how well this verb is documented. So let me get to it. So let me put in there how my mom's being a junkie. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put this here. So this is a verb. Uh, Wu Hoon. Let's see if we can find it. And if we run out of time, what I what I'll end up doing is putting the measurements out. I'll put them on our website, like as how we have them. Uh, it's very interesting to look at some of these things, and we'll we'll give a talk through the whole thing in terms of the roots and, and the prefixes and what's going on with all of this stuff. Uh, so in the verb dictionary, we're going to go look for hoon and see if we find anything. And this is one where I can't remember. It's right there. Wu hoon and at wu hoon is a uh, what we're, you know, it usually has the ut in front of it. Um, let's see. So we're going to scroll up to prepare. So we can just look at this verb. Um, oops, sorry. Just skipped a step. So what we want to do, we go back and find this. So here's hun. It is transitive. So we expect there to be an object and a subject in there. Now we'll go back up here and we'll go look for prepare. So scrolling up from Q and we get pretty press prepare. I'm getting ready to go hunting. It took them. So here we have four day across like this is over a length of time so you can get ready for something and if you name it a soon now you have a third person object but if you're just saying i'm getting ready then you use at this is very similar to hoha and at hoha i ate it i ate and so this is a, a good verb to learn how to like we're getting ready to go. We're getting, you know, this implies like getting the shoes on, packing the lunches, any of that stuff. It's really used a lot to say getting ready to travel, getting ready to something. But it could also work for like, we're in the back of the house getting ready for the kui. Like, I, I think it would work for that. But it, it does often be used, it's often used for like traveling, getting ready to take a trip. Okay, so now we got uh, he was getting ready. Uh, yeah, his relatives or his friends. 
uh, let's see, Ajit at Yanach Sa. Let's listen to it. So on your uh, official think it difficulty scale on a scale of one to ten, with ten being very difficult, uh, how is it listening to this recording? Well, compared to other recordings, I want to say like it was poor, like in terms the quality was good. Mm -hmm. I agree I with think, it. I, I agree. I think I think you could hear him clearly, but then sometimes there's a lot of um sometimes he has a little um preparedness, you know, like he reiterates or kind of uh uh kind of thing, and that would confuse us. Yeah, like, and, and he was a master storyteller. He did have this sort of uh, tendency to kind of really grind, push his teeth together and talk out like, and so sometimes you, you can hear that and it does sometimes muffle it a little bit, I think, but it was also, it was his style. And like, if you ever saw yeah. him speak, he was very powerful. But as far as like the pacing is really good, uh, the complexity is, is very high. So in this case, you have at wu hun du hun ki ajit at yanak sakhurt. Okay, so drive, driving is kuch, yakwa? Yes. And we'll go. And so the same thing, like, we, okay, there's boating, there's driving, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can go, we'll go look up Kuch, and we're looking for Ya and an S classifier. Like, those are the two things we're looking for in this verb dictionary. So we're going to go here, and there it is. Transport by boat, right? Mm -hmm. And so we do have transport by boat, but we do have a couple of other things going on in in this so you have uh the na is there and the t and then you also have this what is the underline x doing there anybody know what that is it's like the subject it's n not the subject uh, uh, repetitive <laughs> yes it's so if we if we sort of un I'm gonna I'll copy and paste it. So if we were to say let's put this down below and let's uh, let's write it out. So we give this guy the little eyeballs that goes to na. And if I were to expand this, mm -hmm. what's it gonna become? Oh, uh, uh, and ka. It's going to be ka. So this is this is pretty wild. So if you have ga, uh, well, no, let's not do that. Let's say if you have, um, no, let's, yeah, I guess we'll do that. Okay, sorry. I don't know. My brain it doesn't work sometimes. So like, for example, ga, u, ka. So this is... <laughs> Have it at number five. Okay. This is going to get you future, right? So, ga, uh, ka gets you future. Mm -hmm. but if you drop the vowel, if this letter A falls out of there, what does that become? Do we know that? If I just pull that letter A right out, because oh, we got to do some contracting. So, for example, odd, we're going to say, they are gonna go a day something good. So if I remove this A, then I don't know how to code this, but that's gonna, or if I move this A, if I remove that vowel, that reverts to a K. That kind of tells us, okay, that is a K. Right, that's just what happens. 
there's this other kind of interesting thing where if I remove this vowel, it kind of depends on the contraction. Like that might become, it won't become just an underlying K. It'll become an underlying X. And this is one of these things that's really just as far as pattern goes. I, I don't, I can't think of a situation where that goes just to an underlying G. It will usually go to an underlying X. However, if you did, so this, so we're going to take this really far and then we're going to be done. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But if we, what we actually have here is we do have the subject, right? So this is, he was getting ready to go so he could bring things to his friends, to his relatives, right? So that's, that's what's going on here. That's so he could do this other thing. So we get one of these purposive things. But this, this is with the zero. So what would I need to change here? Let me copy this again to say, so I could bring things by boat. Then you need the subject. This needs to change to ha. And what's going to happen now is you have yanach sa and you're going to get yan ka sa So in this case, ka plus ka will very often equal ka. Okay, now these are all like sort of like getting into some advanced contraction stuff, but that's why when you take the A away, it turns into an underlying X. It's just, it's nach tu ah, it's right there. And same with a whole bunch of the gach tu, gach du, all of those is you're taking the letter A out of the ka and it's turning into an underlying X. So just in terms of like, how do we start thinking about this stuff? When we start thinking about a prefix contracting, ka will become ch, ka will become k. You can't go. <sighs> I mean, that was big stuff. That was big stuff. And then I will, I'll, I'll go, I'll get a bunch of examples and we'll start looking at it. But I just want you to see, like, that is a pattern that you can sort of learn. It's like this thing becomes that thing, that thing becomes this thing. But that's why you're always. A bunch of these futures have this sound in it because you have ga, u, ga. So there's going to be some. The other thing I don't know if we've fully done yet is like, what's the order of contractions? Like when you have these five things, that one's got to go, and then that one, and then that one. So that that type of thing I think also needs to happen. But so this verb form, it sounded like Satuk recognized it as the hortative. And is this part of that pattern you showed us so that something can happen? Did you say use the hortative and then add T at the end? Yes. There, there's a lot of speakers who would probably put a vowel there, but it could be that the verb is getting so long already that he just went You know, because you can hear that T at the end. And you, you list, do the stuff enough, you're like, okay, that sounds like one of those hortative things, because for the hortative, you have to have both the conjugation prefix and ka mode. So you have to have both of those things. So that's why you're going to have yen kati or ye nakati. Um, and so you'll have stuff like that. But basically, to start using this, look up the hortative, add a T, and then you've got it. So, I do hiti de huakuch hit ye. What do you say? Hit ye katutanit. Maybe. I went to his house. So we could carry a fridge inside. We could carry it inside. <laughs> Go back to the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, this this is great stuff. Uh, I don't know if you all got to the part. Did you get to the part with the earrings? Like, like. We'll get to the part with the earrings. It's very fun. It's a very fun 
part of the story. So you're going to hear at some point we're going to start popping. It took us an hour and a half to do like a minute and a half. But it was really a useful exercise and people did so good. And so it, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. So is the reason you're using hortative here, like hortative is let, right? Yes. So, so he could bring them things by boat. You're saying he was let to be, he, he was allowed to bring them things by boat. So that's why it's hortative. Yeah, well, there is this other thing called purposive, like, so the purpose. So whenever you want to say, I did this verb, so I could do this verb. I went there to study. I went there to shop. I, I picked up my friend so we could eat together. Any of those things, the, the formula is you look up a hortative and you add the T at the end. And that's how you get, so this other thing could happen, right? Oh. That, and we're seeing it in stories. He was packing, he was getting ready to go so he could bring stuff to his friends. And that's why you're getting, and so, but it's sort of like, it's something that we've been just sort of like looking at saying, hey, here's one, here's one. But then it's like, but it is useful because then you could come into the verb uh, database, which I will need to pause my brain so I could find, <laughs> here it is, okay. So now we go back to here and then we could, uh, I mean, that one's a weird one. Let's go to, oops, we'll go to eat. So here's eat, uh, and we'll say, we'll go look up the hortative for that. So we go down and we get the hortative, and you can use either one of these. I went inside so I could eat. So you, or I came inside so I could eat. I could say, Neil Chokut. We came inside so we could eat. So if it ends with a vowel, you're usually going to use one of these, put one of these like the YI or the WU on there so that you can have that. So, but that's how you say, so this other thing can happen. So when when do we use um tuadach? Uh tuadach would be like uh they made it possible. Be, be through through what they sort of gave us. Um let me see how I've got that. Okay, they made it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here it is. Would it be something like so on account of that they made it possible? Yeah, like they they're the ones they they built up this sort of foundation so that it could happen, I guess. So like uh, because of it, due to it, by virtue of it. So I'm going on the strength of my grandparent. On one condition, right? So this is more sort of like they're the one who they enabled it to happen. Whereas I think the purposive is it's usually just straight like did this thing so that they could do this other thing. And some of it could be like, I got this thing out of the way so I could drive, you know, I shoveled so I can get out of my driveway or something like that. It could have stuff to do like that. But that's, that's why you get kind of a hortative because it allowed this other thing to occur. We found in a story where to a duck shortened to tuwa. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see, so you can have that and tuwa. Right, so you can have that TX, right? Because you have 
tuwa on there, which is really interesting, right? Like tuwa sagu or whatever. Yake, gonna cheese you, Han. Ukecha. Tachyako yeet a gay, tachonachaya. Uh, so I think Monday we'll pick this up as well. If you want to crank out on this story a little bit, go ahead. I know we keep sort of starting things and then jumping to something else, so that's my fault. Um, but we'll try to get, I think Monday we'll look at these measurements and units because they're really fun. And then we'll also um, try and get up to maybe the five minute mark of this story. There's my challenge to you. Get to the abalone earrings. <laughs> I have one more question. Uh -huh. You said atun hua hun means I'm getting ready to go hunting. But to me, I read it and it says he is hunting or he went hunting. I'm getting ready. Well, there are some that are nouns as well. So like achlun is they are hunting, and it is also a noun hunting. Same with asteich, like technically There are a few of them where if you just heard it in the order that they said it, you wouldn't think they are hunting, I'm getting ready, because it's also it doesn't have at, so then it just sort of uh like the like I could say yejne, that could mean they are working. But it could also mean work. If I say, I'm going to go to work. So there are a set of them that are also nouns. So that's for any verb? Uh, not anyone. Like, uh, any action verb? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you could say, maybe. That, oh, maybe. I don't know. There's got to be a pattern because there's atcha, atlun, astech. Those are all a steak. Those are all, yeah. We'll have cheese. to dig into that. Finish cheese, Johan. Finish cheese. I put a link in the chat for a study group Christine and I started. Cool. And yeah, it's on Friday at. 12 to 1 p.m. if people are interested in joining us. We're on, on the same Zoom? Yes, same study Zoom. Um, I just put it in the chat and I could email it to you too, Satuk, if you like. Please. Okay. Uh -huh. I right.